Okay, no more announcements. We're done with the announcement. Um, today's passage, I mean, the sermon title is called What? Say it. Ready? Go. Let your children come to me. Yes. And it's from where? Ready? Go. Matthew 19, 13 to 15. Yes. So why are we talking about this then? What does it mean, let the children come to me? Here's the Bible verse, the passage. Let me ask third graders to read four, uh, 13, fourth graders to read 14, fifth graders to read 15. Ready? Third graders, go. Yes. Fourth graders, ready, go. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God is within you. Fifteen, fifth graders, let it, ready, go. And he laid his hands on them. <coughs> okay, as you can see, in the uh, Bible times, who are the disciples, guys? Who are the disciples? Yes, Grace, you can raise your hand, yes. Uh, okay, 12 disciples, that's how it's said in Korean, but what, who are they? Yes, Colin? Peter. Huh? Peter. Ah, one of them are Peter. I'm not asking, thank you, I'm not asking about their names, but I'm just asking who, who, who are those people? Yes, Selena? And, the, and the, they're my, huh. uh, okay, so they were the people who were serving Jesus, or yes? Oh, followers of Jesus. Joshua had something else? Okay, so they were following Jesus because they trusted Jesus. They knew that Jesus was somebody special, right? They wanted to call him teacher, and they were learning from Jesus, right? And they were also helping Jesus because as you saw from the video and as you read from the Bible, Jesus was busy because he was so loving and he was powerful, Right? And he was actually, when he went to people, people were able to be healed. And Jesus even had shown miracles of letting de dead people even alive. Right? And people were able to tell that this person is special. This person has this power. <laughs> so they wanted to follow him everywhere. And they wanted Jesus to just touch them. They just wanted to be just near Jesus because they love him so much and they were looking up to him. And the disciples were kind of like making sure, oh, oh, okay, okay, you can come right now. Okay, uh, talk to Jesus now. Uh, okay, you over there, wait. You know, they were kind of like bodyguards or they were the people who were just organizing what's going on, right? Because there are so many people. Um, and some parents were bringing their children because they're so precious, right? You guys are so precious. And they wanted the children to also be blessed by Jesus. And they were like, oh, come, 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 come. And then disciples said, stop. Who are you? These little children don't come to Jesus. No, Jesus is too busy, right? And what did Jesus say? If you want to go back to the Bible verse. Uh-huh, Jesus said, let the little ch children come to me and do not hinder them. Do not say no to them, right? And because to such, to, to children belongs the kingdom of heaven. <gasps> wow, what does that mean? <gasps> Jesus is saying, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven is for them, the children. You should let them come to me. And then what did he do to them? He laid his hands on them. Ah, oh, yes. Ah. Oh. And Jesus was loving them so much, right? In pictures, you will see like Jesus holding babies and children. And he just loved the children so much. Jesus didn't say, ah, uh, uh, uh. Jesus wasn't like that, right? Because he knew how beautiful Ooh. children are. And the disciples were thinking, ah, they're weak. Oh, they're just little. They can't do anything. They're unworthy, you know. Uh, adults, they can learn and they can do something. But children are children. And they were like, oh, they're so bothersome. Oh, don't let them come. But Jesus was thinking differently, right? In the Bible, again, in Matthew, it says similar thing about children. And it says, at the time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They were just curious, you know, as they were learning from Jesus. Well, then who's the greatest? Who's number one? And Jesus said, he called a little child. 
Maybe like he called Jenny, come here. And then he placed the child among them, among the adults who were like, oh, I want to know who's the greatest. And then Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. <gasps> Did you just say, oh, you should know so much. You should have so much. You should just be so beautiful. Then you will be the greatest. No, Jesus didn't say. Just like this little child. If you're this low and if you're this humble, if you're this weak and little, you can be the greatest. That's what Jesus was saying. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. So even from this Bible passage, you can see how Jesus is, God is thinking of children as the most precious, right, out of all. And as we said, disciples didn't know. They were just thinking, just looking at children. Oh, so, uh, still, still babies. But Jesus said, you know, they're humble. They're teachable. We can teach them, and they are faithful. They have this faith, little faith, but that is pure, right? So when I say this, does this mean children are angels? Does this mean children are perfect? No, of course not. A lot of people think, oh, when the babies are born, they are so pure, they are poor, so nat natural you know, as themselves, and they are perfect. They can't sin. They can't do anything wrong. But that is not true, you know, to, to be honest. That is not true, right? Um, in the Bible, actually, it also says in Proverbs 22 that tr we need to train up a child meaning like teach and make sure they do things in the way he should go or she should go. So then even when he or she is old, they will not depart from it. They will not forget about it. So it is important to teach them the right things. And also in the same Proverbs, it says, folly is bound up in the heart of a child. Do you know what folly is? It's like foolishness, not knowing everything. Like, oh, what, what, what is this? You know? And... But the rod of discipline, <gasps> what is rod? Makdegi, hechuri, oops. In the Bible, rod of discipline, what is discipline? Like you telling you and t helping you to know what is right and wrong. And, and if you do wrong, parents or teachers say, no, that is not okay, right? You should get consequence, right? Discipline, because that drives it for, far from him. Meaning the foolishness of not knowing what is right and wrong is in a child, children's heart. Well, when Jesus said child, children are very humble and little and, you know, they're precious, what does this mean? What are, is the Bible saying something opposite? Not really. Jesus still loves his children. Jesus still thinks you are so precious. But at the same time, he also knows that not only you children, young people, but we also. Adults, we are children of God too. And he needs us to be trained, to be far from our foolishness and sinfulness, right? So does that mean we just have to be perfect by ourselves, uh, precious child? Of course not. God already gave us wonderful people around us. And there are more, right? Not only these people. But God gave us mom and dad. You're lovely, right? Your precious mom and dad. And also grandparents. Some of you have grandparents very close to you. I see some of you like have grandma coming to pick you up all the time, right? All these uh, parents and grandparents love you so much. And they are there. God gave you these people. You should be so thankful for being privileged with such great parents and grandparents so that you can come to school like this, right? That you can learn about Jesus every Friday, every day, actually. And he also gave you teachers. Not any teacher, but Christian teachers. You guys know that all the teachers at our school are Christian? And you know what Christian means, right?